hey guys so welcome to part two of this video so i'm just going to jump right into your questions now and yeah how do you make money as a stay-at-home mom so you guys i have a video about five ways to make money as a stay-at-home mom and those five ways were basically things that i have tested i think the only one thing that i've not really tried myself but there were things that i tested on myself and yeah they worked for me so content creation youtube is one of them if you're a kind of person that you're big on instagram or you know you can be big on instagram you like to take pictures you like to look good you like to do funny captions you know you like to get people's attention that way then you can do instagram people will pay you actually if you have a, a, a large number of following yeah, but, but let's go and watch my videos you'll see several other ways that you can make money from home as a stay at home mom okay okay so the next question is how do you manage your monthly income save and still look good i buy my things in bulk so this month for instance i might not save anything because i use all the money to buy all my beauty products you know if i need clothes or whatever although he's one i give money for clothes but beauty products you know hair stuff like that, that i don't really ask him money for i use my one month income to buy most of those things okay maybe not hair maybe not hair but maybe all my beauty products for instance maybe my soap my cream all those things that i usually buy monthly i buy them in bulk and keep so because i have them in bulk so the next month once i get my allowance i just save every freaking thing okay it's easy for me not to touch the money because at least i can manage the soap and cream and the makeup that i already have okay so that's another way another way is that i don't spend so much money trying to look good okay go for affordable products okay go for minimal and affordable products so minimal in the sense that for instance i buy mostly my products from colourpop colourpop is kind of cheap it's not as cheap as you know regular nameless brands on the market but i'm just saying colourpop is something that is in between it's not expensive but it's actually quite good so i buy products from colourpop um, i have just two palettes which can create any look I want to make in this life, okay? I, I basically I, I, I basically don't do very shouty kind of makeup. So those are my two palettes. In fact, the one I had before lasted me for years. The second one I have now is going to last me for years. Okay? Yeah, for when it comes to makeup, that's what I do. Um, foundation, I have just two foundations. One is Colourpop, one is Maybelline. Maybelline is also a very, Maybelline is also a very cheap brand. Um, what else? Eye pencil, I buy my normal Davies, even eyebrow pencil, I buy normal Davies, um, eyeliner, I buy all this normal cheap, I don't know about expensive eyeliners, okay, I buy normal cheap eyeliner, I buy Maybelline mascara, I buy Maybelline, um, black eye pencil for eye, or I buy Zaron, so those are the things you are going to do, then I also shop Okrika sometimes, yes, I shop Okrika for stay at home clothes, for clothes that I wear for just normal errands, I shop Okrika, yeah? Even though I can afford to buy the expensive ones, I don't do it except my husband gives me money. So when he gives me another, another way I was able to save as a stay at home mom, when my husband is like, girl, you need clothes, you will carry money and give me, I'll carry the money and save it. I'll just buy like two clothes. So I can go inside and not buy anything. I'll buy like two, five clothes that he'll say, okay, at least you have tried. I will now carry the remaining money and save it. The only time I really went all out to buy clothes when he said, and he said he wanted to choose the clothes for me, so I showed him the clothes to buy and he bought them. Okay, so that's when I went to like to buy clothes. So that's what I do. You have to you have to be very sharp, you have to be very smart. Look for ways that you can you can save money and still look good. Okrika is not a bad place to shop. Um Okrika clothes are really nice. If you can open your eyes very well and shop from there, okay. Yeah, then you don't want to, then you can also buy from normal boutiques, but just shine your eyes well, okay. When salary is less than monthly expenses, that is basic needs, how is one supposed to save? Girl, see, let me tell you something. This is going to be brutal, but it's the truth, okay? The truth is going to set us free in this country. How much are you earning, okay? I hope you know that there is a bricklayer somewhere who has five children living in a bacha okay and they are all alive okay and they are all doing well in fact when they come out you see them looking strong okay all i'm trying to say is that sometimes what we consider as needs are really not needed okay you do not need to buy close-up toothpaste if you cannot afford close-up toothpaste you don't need to buy that your soap that you buy you can go and buy premium soap I don't know if this is do premier soap. This is do premier soap or imperial leather. All those soaps, sha. Yeah. You can go and buy it, okay? So if this is your mindset, then your needs are always going to surpass your income. Always, okay? Because at the end of the day, your needs are not about to reduce and they're not about to get cheaper. The kind of inflation that has hit Nigeria or is about to hit Nigeria, I don't know if it has hit, 
but the kind of inflation about to, that is about to hit Nigeria, even those your basic needs are not going to be enough. Is your salary increasing? No. Most times, the salary increases by 5,000 naira, but your needs increase by 20,000 naira. Okay? So, you need to just tell yourself that there are people who earn less than I do and they are surviving. How are they doing it? It is sacrifice you have to make for the stage you are in so that you can make more money in the future and start boiling. Okay? So, you need to delay gratification. You need to tell yourself that. I need to break that cycle of, you know, money comes in and I'm still owing. Money comes in and I'm still owing. Like, it's like money is never enough, okay? You need to break, you need to wake up one morning and say, enough is enough. I'm going to break cycle. I am going to save money and I'm going to invest it. I'm going to make more money, okay? And like I said, just because you're making more money does not mean that you're lifestyle should change because that's what some people do you start making 100 naira you now increase your lifestyle to 2000 naira it does not make sense okay you need to step down you need to reduce your expenses to be able to get something extra okay yeah she said hi Ada, i love you love you too do you think i should join my husband in business or start my own it depends it depends i don't know it depends i don't i don't have any some people don't like joining the, i don't know why won't you join your husband in business like you guys share basically every other aspect of your life why would sharing business be an issue i don't get okay so it depends on your relationship with your husband it depends on your family dynamics you 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 you, you are married to the man you know you know <laughs> okay so i can't tell you yes or no i'll tell you that you know the kind of person you're married to can you do a business with him if you cannot, then start on your own. But you can also do with your husband and then start on your own too, okay? Depending on how much you have, you can share, do something with your husband and start on your own and see the one that you prefer and then go from there, okay? I wish to relocate back to Nigeria and I really don't know what to invest in before getting a job. Well, you have to do your research. I don't know about if you're outside the country and you want to invest, but when you come back, you can explore Piggy Vest. You can also explore starting a business that is kind of low risk like full stop business provisions business and stuff like that okay so you can start from things like that or as you're coming back from the abroad you can buy a lot of things and come and sell here but you have to make sure you do your research about what sells and what prices are you know what prices sell but to be honest make sure you come first come and see what's on ground first before you now start deciding okay business ideas for a student that's the next question business ideas for a student as a student business ideas that you can do buying and selling is pretty much the easiest thing you can do as a student go to cheap markets go to balogun go to okrika you can be you can do thrifting go to a big okrika market near you if you have to travel to an okrika market then you can do it travel there go and pick you know first grade night because you know they're for students so don't go and buy rubbish Go and choose first grade nice things that you can find from Okrika. Come back, wash it, dry clean it, and sell it. Okay, don't sell it as brand new. Let them know that it's previously used Okrika, but you know Okrika with a with a style. You, okay, so you wash them, you iron them, you put them in nylon and hanger, and sell. So that's a very good way. Um, you can sell things like handbags. They look look for things around you that people. Okay, there's another thing that people do. Um, people do what you know, this thing. It's also network marketing. If you remember, I'll name it on the screen. So, um, Uche Wesley it does it. It has to do with credit. It has to do with data, uh, airtime or something like that. So it's network marketing, but something you can do for students that are in school. So also, sorry, my battery died. So also, if you're in a private hostel or you stay off campus or you stay or you're going to school from home, then you can consider baking, you know, frying chin chin, stuff like that. You bake them maybe overnight and then package them in the morning and then you go to school and sell it to students during break at affordable prices. People will buy, okay? So there's many things you can do, but focus more on buying and selling and um, things that you can make with your hands, okay? All right, so the next question is how many streams of income should a person have, okay? Um, yeah, how many streams of income? You can have as many streams of income as your mental health can carry, okay? Depending on your appetite for success, your appetite for wealth, you know, you can never have enough, okay? So just do the ones that your strength can carry, your, you know, mental health can carry. Don't go and break down because, you know, you're trying to have multiple streams of income, okay? If you have two solid ones, it's fine. If you're a kind of person that you're very uh, multi-talented or you, have, you, like, you know you can multitask easily, then you can do four or five. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter okay? The good thing is just that if you have more money, you can afford to do a lot because your money can be working for you in some other places while you work physically in other places. What is the best way to go about making a budget and sticking with it? 
for me the best way to go is once the money enters your account leave only the money that you budgeted for for instance your budget for the month you've checked it you have to first check it out though. you know like me i have a list i told you i showed you guys my list for shopping so i write everything there and i now know how much you know um i can spend in a month without feeling it okay so once you know how much you can spend in the month without feeling it but without actually spending more than you need once the money enters your account Keep only what you need and send the rest out either to your savings or account you cannot touch or to piggy bank or something. Just send the money out so that the only money in your account is the money that you budgeted. So that if you like finish it in the first two days, you will be hungry till the next time. Okay, try and have discipline. If you're not disciplined, no matter even if you carry the money and give to an army man to keep keep for you tomorrow, you will carry God and go to his house and collect your money back. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, it's all about discipline, okay? How are you ensuring a safe educational plan for Cora and Ava in the future? Um, yeah, without divulging too much, we have we have a very good one, okay? I, I don't want to divulge too much because if I say, I don't know, I don't divulge more, but we have a very good one. How do you think about getting a mortgage to buy a house? Yeah, for me, I don't really know much about it, but the little I know, actually in Nigeria, it's not really... It's not. I don't. I rather. I rather can rent house. It's better for me to rent my house and for me to buy a house. But for land, buying of land is pretty good. If you do your research very well, though, so don't just go and buy land anyhow. They will cheat you. Especially in Nigeria, they will cheat you. They will sell the land to you and 200, 200 other people. Then the day you want to go and start building, 200, 200 other people will show up with their tractors. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we have to be careful when you're buying land, and then you have to get people involved people that are very good in real estate so they will tell you you know you can't really you can't really predict sometimes it's luck okay sometimes it's luck you can buy a land in one remote village and tomorrow the government will go and start the road there and you know put one factory there that 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 land will just skyrocket okay meanwhile you can go and buy land in one you know one booming area and then next year something will happen there maybe pipeline will bust there something will happen there and everybody will move away from there your land has devalued so at the end of the day um you have to be really careful and then pray about it. let god direct you in the right way okay this is your biggest financial regret <laughs> one not doing my research two getting myself involved in ponzi now in my own case i didn't do ponzi out of ah greed though, or the way people used to go and do ponzi no the well greed is part of it yeah. greed is part of it because i should have known that the the income was too good to be true but i did one business in my mind i was doing a legit business even though i wasn't clear on how this thing was working but because i depended on what people were saying i depended on on the people that that brought the idea to me because they were in my church then you know so i thought that these people are really the way the the person's husband was talking and i used to see him as someone who is very smart or someone that is very business savvy and he was rich you know kind of rich not that rich but at least he was they were doing very well for themselves so when they brought the opportunity, me, I jumped on it though, thinking, ah, for this people to be involved, then the business will be legit. <laughs> it ended in tears. So yeah, my biggest financial regret was not doing my research and involving myself in Ponzi, because it ended up, it turned out to be Ponzi at the end of the day. In fact, this one is not even Ponzi. This one is even worse than Ponzi somehow. It's worse because I didn't know what I was getting myself involved in. And I was not telling other people to come and join. Then another regret is not starting early. Not starting early. I wish I had started early. I wish my parents had taught me early to start saving and investing. So I'm going to correct that mistake with my children. Okay, very soon. Cora is going to start a business. I'm going to come and tell you guys about her business. Very soon she's going to start a business. Okay, I'm going to start giving her money to save, and we're going to start talking about having serious conversations about money. So yeah, my mistake is not starting early and then involving myself in that rubbish I involve myself in. Okay, so the next one is any views on maintaining joint accounts in marriage and joint solar property ownership. Like I said in the person that asked before, it depends on your relationship, it depends on your marriage, okay? For me, it's not a big deal for me to do joint, you know, joint investments, joint ownership. You know, it's not a big deal for me to have joint accounts with my husband, even though I don't see the need. Can somebody even tell me the need for joint accounts? Why? Why do you need joint accounts? Why, what are you joining accounts for? What's, the, what's really the purpose of joint accounts? What does joint accounts give you that having your individual accounts does not, cannot give you? Okay? Except maybe people are saving towards a goal, then it's a joint savings account. I know that we're both, 
because we are both earning money we are both saving towards this goal then we'll save the money here then i can understand okay so the person is asking me how much do you receive from youtube i have a video on my first paycheck i also talked about how much i received subsequently i also talked about how much i received for you know my most viral video and all that okay so how much youtube pays me is within with the same range every month but it's not guaranteed okay sometimes i have to work twice as hard to earn as much as i earned the month before okay especially now that um um what is the name all these things are happening around the world you have to work twice as as much to um make the same money you made before okay it, it's what it is so yeah how do you budget as an individual and, and as a couple also how do you effectively track your expenses also how do you go about investment and is it preferable for a com for a couple to do joint investment okay so how do i effectively track my expenses girl you have to write everything down okay write every freaking thing down i know nothing about writing things down when you start writing things down you will realize that, um, that, that there's some things that you don't even remember that this is an expense until you write it down when you go and write on paper chicken republic twenty thousand. that's when your eye would clear you need to write write things down in plain english okay or type it like i did but write things down on transportation i spent this on fuel i spent this on my children's toys i spent on my children's snacks on my snacks on my clothes on my shoes on my bags on my makeup on my this this much i spent when you write them down and write the you know exact amount besides it you'll be able to say ah okay this thing is it's not worth it or you know you'll be able to track your expenses but if you are just swiping your card up and down you know swiping your card here and there you know just burning cash you will not be able to track it before you know what's happening your money has paid you'll be wondering where your money went to but when you write things down you will know exactly where your money went to and you will know whether you are being you know um what they call it frivolous or not so the next question is how can one be a stay-at-home mom and control millions when you find this answer, please tell me, yo. <laughs> when you find the answer, because I'm here, eh? But just tell me first. Anyway, but to be honest, yeah, how can you be a stay-at-home mom and control millions? To be honest, it's going to be difficult to be a stay-at-home mom and control. I'm not saying it's not possible, but I'm saying that it's difficult, okay? So you need to be on your A game. You need to know how to budget. You need to know how to invest. You need to know how to prioritize. You need to know how to allocate time properly. You need to know how to be on your A game because remember, to be able to control millions from home, you have to work twice as hard as someone who is going to work to control millions. I hope you know that because, for instance, as I'm filming this video now, my children have been screaming endlessly. Like, it's hungry me to go down there and carry rope and tie both of them. It's hungry me to do that, but I'm just repeating myself, okay? So, it's much difficult to work from home, especially when you have kids, when you have a baby. So, you have to be on your A game, you have to prioritize. You have to schedule things. You have to put your children on a schedule. Yes. If your child is coming and not to sleep till 10 p.m., you have to start sleep training your children. You have to put your children on a schedule. If it's that when you, your children wake up anytime they feel like it and start crying, no, you have to put them on a the schedule. Wake up by 6 a.m., you bath them, you give them food. If they want to sleep back, fine. But you know you've done that, you're, that's your morning chores, and you can go and focus on your business, on your job, or whatever it is that you're doing to make money, okay? So, yeah, then you also need to make, you need, also need to get help. Okay, you need to get you need to get um, good help. Okay, so when you're getting the help, you need to interview your helps very well. You need to be sure that they know what they are doing. You need to train them very well. Train your helps properly to be able to take care of the home front even while they're at home. Okay, because some of us just carry helps without training them, and then we're angry that things are not working out for us. <sighs> anyway, so all I'm trying to say is, I know that I can go down there now. Eva that is crying is the one that costs whatever she's crying for. I'm sure she's the cost, but she, her voice is always the loudest. Remove distractions. If on Instagram you are following Insta blog Niger, this one Niger, twerking videos, that one videos, eh, 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 funny videos. If you are watching, if you are following all kind of videos or all kind of people on Instagram, you have to remove all of them. Okay, follow business-minded people, follow strict people, follow people that you know that. Anytime that their, their post comes up, you're learning something new, okay? Same thing on YouTube, same thing on, same thing on Twitter, okay? For people that know that, that they're always dropping hot, hot, um, you know, good information, okay? So, yeah, Facebook too. Yeah, so, you need to be on your A-game. Um, do you believe in the bills in a marriage to be split 50-50? No, I do not believe in that. Do you think budgeting is important in a marriage? Yes, it is, absolutely. Should good credit score 
a requirement should good credit score be a requirement for marriage yes it should because you don't gonna carry what you don't know okay you don't you don't gonna carry what you don't know why is the person's credit score not um good well what happened so i'm not saying that not having a good credit score you know should discredit the person okay all i'm saying is that you need to know why why doesn't the person have a good credit score? Is it that the person was just ignorant or the person did not know or you know something happened in the person's life that made their score bad or the person was you know borrowing money anyhow without paying back the person was just misbehaving you need to know because it speaks to a person's character sometimes you know how those things go so their credit score can actually speak to the person's character so you have to be careful about that okay you have a savings of one million your husband has a debt of the same amount Will you pay off his debt? Did I send him? Did I? Was it me that sent him to go and collect debt of one million? <laughs> was it me that you should go and borrow one million? Naira? What it cost me? You're going to pay your debt. Okay, now the truth is that it depends on how the debt came about. If I knew about it beforehand, then sure I can pay. Also, it also depends on the type of debt. For instance, if the debt comes without um. It comes without um, interest. For instance, I say he just borrowed one million from somebody. They ah, will give you back your one M next week or whatever. If he borrowed one M for someone and giving back the person one M, then I am not bringing out my money because I will go and invest my money so that I can make money from that money. And I'll tell him, okay, go and find your one million naira because there's no, you know, demorage on it. They are not. He's not losing. He's not going to lose more by not paying the money back immediately. But if it's a case where you know interest is still accumulating then i'm going to use my money and pay it off so that we don't have to accumulate more debt okay or if the interest is lower than the interest i will get from saving my money then i will save my money all right guys that's it for the questions i hope i was able to answer your questions well um if i didn't answer your questions well or if you're watching this you are into you know you are into finance or you know all these things very well you know the right answers or you know better answers Please leave the answers in the comment section. I also would like to learn, like I said, me, I'm still looking for ways to invest my own money too. I would like to learn. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.